This is a bait cast reel that has a bad backlash. What do you do after that happens? Stay tuned. You're going to see how to get yourself one of the best bait cast backlash picks. Hi, my name is Jerry and I am a lifelong fisherman. So don't forget to subscribe or give me a thumbs up, click on the bell, share with your friends, or leave comments and questions below. There are two kinds of fishing reels, generally. One is called a spinning reel, and this is on a spinning rod, and it's designed to be primarily better at using lighter line on this spinning reel than on other kinds of reels. The other kind of reel is a bait caster, like this. This is designed to handle heavier line. It's easy to use relatively, but you need to learn how to use this. You, lean, you need to learn how to thumb the spool as the line is going out. Uh, there is also a spool uh, tensioner knob. There are magnets built into here to stop you from getting what's called a backlash or an overrun. There are lots of styles of casting that you can do with this that you cannot do as easily with a spinning reel. But again, you have to learn how to use this. This is not something you can pick up off the shelf and use effectively the very first time you put one of these in your hand. Now this is a normal cast. Push that, releases this, now your line will go out. So you push it down, you hold on with your thumb, Put your thumb on the spool. You learn how to do that. You set the magnets correct. You set your spool tension correct. And the lure goes out where you want it to go. Except for days that you're throwing into the wind. It is windy today. You may hear it in the sound, but the wind is coming right in at this angle, which is kind of the worst places to try to cast into. When you throw a lure with a bait caster into the wind, what happens is the lure in the air gets resistance from the wind and slows down. So it means that this line is traveling out at a given speed, but now the line is slowing down because the lure is slowing down in the air. Well, this spool doesn't necessarily know that that's what's going on, and the spool keeps traveling at the same speed. So now the spe speed of the spool is faster than the line coming out, and extra line starts coming off of this and it makes whoo, a heck of a mess called a backlash or it overruns like I just did. And you can see this mess of all your line here. This is called a backlash or an overrun. Now this is a relatively smaller one and as you can see I've gotten it out fairly easily but sometimes they don't come out so easy and you need a little bit of assistance because the line is wrapped around itself inside here and you can't get your fingers in here to get the individual strands out very well. Okay, this time I'm gonna really heave this trying to get a good backlash and I'm not gonna thumb the spool. And the line went out, got tight because it wouldn't come out anymore. The lure actually came backwards in the air and plopped on the ground right there and you can see this big mess here. Well, I can't reach in there and get all those individual lines out trying to get this backlash out of here. So you need something to reach in there and a pick is what you use. And let me show you what that is and how to use it. This is a commercially produced pick. I've had many of them over the years and just like this one, it just broke. This is a short piece of 5 16 inch wooden dowel. I just cut it short enough that I could kind of hold it like this. This is a wire. This happens to be the company, Malin. It's number 15 wire, 278 pound test, 0 0.035 diameter. And this is what we're going to use as the wire that you use to pick out backlashes or anything like that. And this is how we're going to figure out what size drill bit to use. 
The smallest side here is a 062. It's a 16th inch drill bit. It's about as small as they make, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to pick through here, find my 16th inch drill bit, and I already have that in the drill press. So let me show you where we're going next. All right, this is the dowel, 5 16 inch, and I want to cut this about the length of a short pencil to just about here. Now, how do you cut this? Take a sharp knife like this, it's a utility knife, put it on the mark, and we're going to roll it, and we're creating a, a little groove, and then I cut it off. So this is going to be about this long and the wire on the end is going to stick out a little. Now I also want to make a shorter one just as one that I can put in my pocket or in my tackle bag. Now we have a short one. I have two long ones, one short one. Well how do I make a line down the middle? Take a marker, put it right on its side, hold it in place, and run it down. It's right down the middle. Let's cut three pieces that will go with this. On the end, we're gonna bend this and we're gonna put this in a hole that we're gonna drill in here. We're gonna make a slot down the side. So we want at least enough wire to stick out to say, well, at least we'll go a little bit long. There's the one for the short one. So now at least we've got roughly our three wires cut also. So we have our 16th inch drill bit mounted. We're gonna put a hole close to the end, right through the middle of that black line. All right, noise alert. Just like that. We're going to do that on all of them. So how do we put the slot down the side of the dowel? I have one of these. Looks like a little buzz saw. Put it in the end of a Dremel tool. And just like before, make sure I got my eye protection on. I put these go on over the top of my reading glasses and we're going to make a slot right where the black mark is. You know when you're there far enough when you can put this wire in the slot you created. And there it goes. So we're deep enough. In order to have this wire affixed to this so that it won't, and then it's going to have an elbow on this end, so that it won't twist itself that's the purpose of that hole in the end. I'm going to take the wire, grab it on the end, just about the width of the tool that I'm using, and do a 90 degree bend. So when you get done, it looks like that. And this is going to go in that hole that's in that slot, and then it's going to go in this groove all the way up, like that, and we're going to put some glue wood glue in here and we're going to seal it in here. I'm going to wrap it with electrical tape. This will be sticking out the end. We'll cut it to the right length after we bend it over and make the ability to do the pick. And it'll be just like that on the end. This particular brain is tight bond. It's a premium wood glue. So I'm going to stick something in the glue. This little screwdriver. Something relatively small. Let's do the little one first. And we're going to put some glue in this little slot. Just kind of slop it in here, fill up that groove. You're going to wipe it off anyway in a second. Here's my short wire. And I covered over my little hole, but I found it. Stick it in, put this in the groove, push it in. And take off the excess just for a second here. Now I have some electrical tape and we're going to use this to give a little bit of a handle to this. Just a surface we can hold it that better on but it'll also hold it in place until the glue dries. A couple of days. Get it started. Get it kind of wrapped pretty tight. I'll go around a couple of times at the base, and now I'm going to work my way up. Again, keep the wire in the groove that you cut. And closer to the top, I'm going to go around several times, because that's where the pressure on this is. 
trying to hold this wire when you're using it. So I went around a couple of times, cut off my electrical tape, wrap it nice and tight, and we now have our pick, at least the wire is sticking up. So let me show you what we do next. I want to come up maybe to about about there, about here and have the bend. So I'm going to grab this. Now the wire is here on the side, so I want to bend it so it faces down. So right about maybe here, grab a hold of this. Again, 90 degrees, but slightly more than 90 degrees. Okay, see how that is? Safety glasses on. When you do this part, you're going to cut this off kind of close, but not real close. But make sure you got your glasses on so that that doesn't fly around, catch you in the eyes. And there's a pick. Works well. It's pretty strong, but yet small enough to be able to get into the places you want. Now, if you decided you want a little bit more bend on it so that you can kind of reach in and pull, then just bend it a little. As you can see, I made a few of them. One, two, three, four, five, six bigger ones, two smaller ones. These two were prototypes types that I did that they have the wire going down the center of it. Uh, and they actually held up well. Uh, I glued them in with the glue, uh, but I think over time they're like likely to just twist and turn and no longer function the way how I want them. I have lots of places to put these. I have two seats in the twin troller. I've got uh, uh, bags that I walk and fish with uh, that I'll probably carry these or in my pocket. I got friends to give them to, so they won't go unused. And I very much hope that you liked uh, the video, that you learned something from this and they're easy enough to do, uh, you can make them yourself. Uh, they're dirt cheap. The, the wire was under $5 and you could probably make hundreds of these. Uh, a dowel, which is, uh, I don't know, three and a half, I don't know what the length was, was 98 cents. Uh, electrical tape, some glue, no expense at all. These are something that you could use, you can make it yourself, and these are much better than anything I've ever seen in the store. The ones in the stores are prettier, they're fancier, but functionally, these work much better. If you like my video, feel free to subscribe. Just push that button in the corner. Or give me a thumbs up. Or share with your friends. And don't forget to leave some comments or questions on the bottom. Thanks for watching.